I'm going to start out and fill you in on some facts about Isle of Capri. Isle of Capri is a billion dollar gaming company with locations in 14, uh, with casinos in 14 different locations. Uh, we start in Pompano down in Florida, move up the uh, mid part of the country through uh, Mississippi, Missouri, Iowa, and Louisiana. And then we have two properties in Black Hawk, Colorado, uh, land based facilities. Our company generates over a billion dollars in revenue. We're one of the larger regional gaming companies. We operate 15 casino properties in six states. Our properties uh, comprise 3,000 hotel rooms, over 40 dining outlets throughout our company, over 15,000 slot machines, 350 table games, and many of our properties have space for meetings, convention centers, and we do have one racetrack at our casino in Florida. This company has a deep commitment to Missouri. Between the senior management team, many of us have been in Missouri operating with one company or another since gaming first came to Missouri to Riverside uh, back in the early 90s. I personally have been involved in Missouri since I was with Argosy Gaming in 1997, and many of our management team have worked in the state of Missouri uh, and have been licensed in Missouri. Five years ago, after the Hurricane Katrina, the company relocated its corporate office to St. Louis where we employ over 150 uh, people. Our management team is deep. We represent over 200 years of experience in gaming and entertainment. And we have managed over 75 properties in 20 different jurisdictions throughout the United States. And we have, do have some international experience as well. Our corporate office is really handles the corporate functions of marketing, information technology, internal audit and compliance, our corporate finance division, we do our construction and development out of St. Louis, human resources function, our legal, and then of course our uh, corporate uh, operations people are based in St. Louis, Missouri. With that, I'd like to introduce Virginia McDowell, who is our president and chief operating officer. Thank you and good morning. As Jim said, our Missouri roots do run deep. Uh, we have properties in three different distinct geographical locations in the state, in Boonville, in Kansas City, and in Carothersville. At those properties, we employ a total of 1,400 people, including the folks in the corporate office that Jim just mentioned. In our fiscal year, 2010, last year, our total Missouri payroll was $66 million, and the total amount of gaming taxes that we paid in the state was $53 million. We are good corporate citizens in all of the communities where we are licensed and where we operate. Uh, this is just a small sample of the over 150 organizations, large and small, and obviously some very familiar names there, uh, that we have supported across Missouri. We also encourage our employees to donate their time, treasure, and talents to a variety of different organizations as well through our Community ACES Charitable Foundation. This is our group from Boonville uh, at the recent United Way Day of Caring. This is our group from Kansas City building a house for Habitat for Humanity. And this is our corporate office at the Gateway Dragon Boat Races benefiting the Rankin-Jordan Pediatric Center in St. Louis. We are a company that is focused on the utilization of minority and women contractors and vendors at our Missouri properties. We have recruited and encouraged the utilization of minority and women-owned businesses in our respected, uh, respective communities across the state. And we continue to work with the Missouri Gaming Commission and with Commission staff member John Nathan to increase and identify uh, the utilization of minority and women vendors. We are also a company that is focused on responsible gaming and preventing underage gaming. We are an active member of the Missouri Alliance to Curb Problem Gaming through the Missouri Gaming Association. We adhere to the Code of Conduct of the American Gaming Association for Responsible <coughs> Gaming. We are actually part of the group that drafted that, and we are a board member of the American Gaming Association. We do conduct annual training for compulsive and underage gaming for all of our team members across our three properties, actually across our 15 properties. And we also promote both the Missouri DAP program and our self-exclusion program, which excludes uh, problem gamers from uh, all of the, the uh, properties across our enterprise. When we talk about the opportunity in Missouri and the fact that we know Missouri, uh, we looked at a variety of different opportunities in the state, made the determination that Cape Girardeau represented 
not only the best opportunity for our company, for the state, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Steve Galloway from Gaming Market Advisors, who's going to walk you through uh, the numbers as to why we believe this is the case. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. My name is Steve Galloway with Gaming Market Advisors. We are one of the uh, premier consulting firms in the gaming industry. We have offices in Las Vegas <coughs> and Denver. In fact, our Las Vegas office has a full research facility for the gaming industry. We complete work in basically every domestic market in the United States, international markets, um, Native American markets. We performed work in over 16 countries uh, for, over s for six public companies, numerous private gaming companies, and, inst and financial institutions and Native American tribes. <clears throat> this is a short list of our, of our clients, include, as I said, public gaming companies such as Boyd Gaming, obviously Isle of Capri, um, IGT, MGM, uh, other companies such as Lloyd's of London, um, many private gaming companies, and many tribes such as the Cushada Tribe, Mohegan Sun, uh, Casino Morongo, etc. Gaming market advisors, primarily we do uh, gaming market assessments expansion re relocation analyses, business marketing plans, operation analyses, et cetera. For this engagement, we are hired to do a gaming market assessment for the proposed Isle uh, Cape facility, um, in addition to quantifying the gaming revenues for the other applicants and the impact on Missouri tax revenues. When you do a gaming market assessment, there are numerous methodologies you can use. Um, when you have a lack of data, or if you're trying to do a back napkin analysis quickly, we'll do a basic market carve out, concentric ring analysis, or benchmark analysis. But when you have large amounts of data available, as we do in Missouri, for the existing properties, um, how they're performing today, the best method and the most widely used method is that of a gravity model. Um, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with gravity models. Many reports use them throughout the industry. The advantage of a gravity model is that you can first calibrate it to the current market con conditions because you have the data available of how everyone is performing. Um, this means when you build the model, you have to put every single casino in the, in the market in the model. And in addition, we can then grow that model to future years based on population trends and economic trends. <clears throat> the cannibalization is a simple matter of subtracting a with competition scenario from the without competition scenario. In a situation in Missouri where we're trying to quantify the incremental revenues to the state and incremental tax revenues, a gravity model really is the best and most accurate model to use. So I want to quickly walk through some, some markets here that we're talking about. This is a St. Louis market, and we are, these are 10-mile radius rings around each casino that exists today. Um, the purpose of this slide is to really illustrate how saturated of a market it is. Everyone's markets overlap with one another. These are only 10 mile radiuses. This is a very tight market area. If you put in the proposed casinos, either North County or Celebration, you can see it's going to eat the market share of the other existing operators there today. The same case can be said, said for Kansas City. Again, these are the existing casinos today in Missouri, including the, the Indian Casino and the Wyandotte Casino. And again, all of the 10 mile ring markets overlap significantly. This situation gets only worse in a few years when Penn opens up their Speedway facility and again the rings significantly overlap showing that they're going to cannibalize revenue from Missouri casinos. To make this, the situation worse would be approving a casino at Sugar Creek where again it's completely overlapping the existing markets and it's going to cannibalize the existing casinos there. On the other hand if we look at the Cape, these rings here, they're 10 mile rings, um, and as they look pretty silly because they're so far apart, we actually put 25 mile rings on as well. As you can see, even with 25 mile rings, none of the casino's markets overlap. The ring in the upper left hand corner of the map, that's the outer 25 mile ring of River City. This clearly illustrates the Cape, should the aisle be awarded a license, will have minimal cannibalization on Missouri casinos, and there's a slight overlap with uh, Harris casino, but of course that's in Illinois, so that's okay. I um, want to quickly go over the results of the model. I'm, I'm not going to go through the detailed chart. You have, you have the report, um, but I want to show the, the key result of this. This is for the Chain of Rocks casino. 
what this is saying is that we believe the total gaming revenue from Chain of Rocks would be 107 million, of which 71 million would be cannibalized from existing Missouri casinos, and it would generate approximately 35.8 million of new revenue, new taxable gaming revenue to the state of Missouri. This is a similar situation with North County. This is the detailed numbers, but we'll go to the summary. Um, North County as well, 117 million. Again, the overwhelming majority of that would be cannibalizing existing casinos, estimated at 77.4 million of cannibalization, and new growth to Missouri of 39.8 million. Sugar Creek is a, is a similar situation. We estimate that the total revenues will be 94 million out of the facility, of which 35.3 million will be new, new growth for Missouri. Um, but the majority of it, again, 58.6 million, will be cannibalized. Whereas the Cape, going back to the, the rings, where none of the rings overlap, where very few of the rings overlap, you're going to have the most market growth for Missouri. We estimate that the Cape will do 79.4 million in gaming revenue, of which the majority, on the other slides, the red was the majority, here the blue, which is the new revenue to Missouri, is going to be 66.9 million and it's only going to cannibalize approximately 12 and a half million. And the advantage here too, that cannibalization of 12 and a half million is spread pretty evenly throughout Missouri casinos. You have some from the Isles, <coughs> Isles own facility 85 miles away in Crothersville, and then much of it is dis distributed throughout some of these St. Louis properties, but they're very small impacts because of the distance that the Cape is from the existing Missouri properties today. This chart shows a summary of each of the um, incremental gaming revenues, ta incremental taxable gaming revenues to the state of Missouri, and the actual tax revenue. We estimate that the Cape Casino will generate an incremental $17.5 million of tax revenue purely from gaming for the state of Missouri. The next closest competitor would be North County at $9.9 million, Paragon short be shortly behind that at $9.5 million, and then Celebration the least amount at $8.9 million. This number, 17 and a half, is nearly two times that of the nearest competitor. Just want to, this, is a, this slide summarizes each of the casino's revenue, the percent that's new, the, the hard number that's new, and that which is cannibalized. Again, you can just see clearly here that the Isle Cape Casino will be generating the most new revenue to the state of Missouri in, in comparison to the other three. Just want to quickly now go through some um, want to go through some empirical data from Missouri in terms of gaming statistics. If we look at St. Louis, when River City opened up, R River City jumped, immediately grew their revenue, very quickly stabilized, and basically stabilized right around $15 million of gaming revenue, which is great for them. But if you look at the other four existing operators in St. Louis, every casino's revenue has been experienced a steady decline since the opening of River City, and of course we brought President down to, to zero. That's pretty, that pretty much tells a story right there. They opened a new casino and it cannibalized the heck out of everyone else. You look at the overall market since February in St. Louis, and basically it stayed flat. What has happened here is, we, is that River City opened up and it cannibalized the existing operators. We have a similar situation in Kansas City. We have more data on Kansas City, because I'm going to refer to the Argosy expansion, which occurred back in about 2006. When Argosy built their expansion, where they built a new boat, added a nice hotel, and of course it was done by the group behind me at a different company, the, the facility did fantastically well. However, that was generally at the expense of the other properties in Kansas City. Every casino since 2006 revenues declined. You look at the overall market in Kansas City, yes, it did increase slightly from 2006 to 2009. Um, however, I would argue that growth had more to do with increases in population and income. And then while we had the recession hit in 2008, we had the relaxation of the $500 betting limit, which helped the market continue to grow. Argosy did not expand the market, it simply cannibalized everyone else. In summary, the greater Cape Girardeau market is not saturated. The St. Louis and Kansas City markets are saturated. 